Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. And today we're gonna talk briefly about this Total Film article that came out. Uh, the magazine issue came out today. I think the last one starred, you know, had like The Meg, and it was all about that movie, and it had other articles about other movies in it. This one's kind of like their superhero issue, uh, or their comic book movie issue, and they talk a lot about different comic books, like Wonder Woman 84, which is coming out, and Aquaman, and even Into the Spider-Verse. But of course, their main story in this one is Venom. And you see them on the cover, I have the image up here, and and there was two different covers, so I'll flip them both up here, uh, you know, throughout this. And uh, they kind of just give you a broad strokes interview with some of the people in this movie. And it seems like they did this probably around the time of Comic-Con because they talk a lot about Comic-Con. And they say like, oh, Tom really enjoyed himself at Comic-Con. And then they talk to Tom Hardy and he says, yeah, I walked around the floor even after the panel. And that was very exciting for me to do the panel. It was kind of like my first time doing that. And then walking around, he said he wore like a Yoda mask at one point and he wore like a llama mask. And he was like, yeah, I was just walking around with my 10 year old and I was just trying to keep an eye on him. And then eventually the mask got too hot. You know, like I kept switching out masks because it was getting hot and sweaty and I was trying to see and talk and everything. He's like, so finally I just took the masks off and just walked around with my son and very few people actually recognized me because everyone's kind of so scrunched together. Uh, so he talked about his experience walking around the floor, which was kind of neat uh, to see. And then him talking to his son and saying his son was a big reason and draw for him to take this role because when he first saw a picture of Venom, he was like, oh, it's just like an evil Spider-Man. Um, I don't know anything else about the character. So he goes in a little bit more depth about how his son you know, kind of interested him in the role. And then once he read the script, he was like, oh, I think I can work with this. I think I can bring something to the table from an acting standpoint to this character. And uh, and that's what got him involved. And then they also say that he was kind of the beacon that got all these other actors involved. Because this has a really great cast in this movie with Riz Ahmed, Michelle Williams, Woody Harrelson, Jenny Slate, uh, Scott Hayes. You know, there's a lot of great people in this movie. Reed Scott as well. And so uh, they, a lot of them say, you know, they attribute just Tom to getting them to this role and they're like you know what we read the script we liked it but Tom being like the focus of it and knowing what he's going to bring to the table and knowing what kind of roles he's done before that's why we all got involved so I would say overall this like you know 10 page article or whatever it had uh, the the most like the newest stuff we got in this article was probably just a few pictures so I'll have those popping up here um, you'll see a couple here with like Tom Hardy standing outside next to his motorcycle. And then there's a couple other ones with him like outside, the, you know, near the MRI machine and talking to Reed Scott. Uh, but we don't really get a ton of new information in this. And, uh, and that kind of bummed me out because I paid $5 for the digital copy uh, after already subscribing to the magazine. Uh, I got like a three month subscription for like four bucks. And then uh, for some reason I couldn't access the latest issue or I was having trouble accessing it. And so I was like, well, I wanna make this video before I go to work. So me being impatient, I was like, all right, let's just pay another $5 and get it. And so I have it here on my Kindle, uh, the issue, uh, you know, the article and everything. And I read it, you know, twice actually now. And so uh, I was gleaming, I was like hoping for something. They do talk a little bit about the rating and how they, you know, they're really pushing the envelope and they've done everything they can but it's up to the MPAA now. So they originally you know, planned for this to be a standalone universe. That's also something to talk about in here, but to get on the rating thing, you know, they said, you know, we tried, we did our best to make as accurate of a portrayal of Venom as possible, giving our limitations. But as far as like the dark humor and the violence and the gore and stuff like that, you know, we really tried to stay true to that and it'll be up to the MPAA. And even I think Tom Hardy says in this interview, it's a pretty, it'll be pretty close. He's like, it, it could go one way or the other, depending on what we've seen so far. Uh, so that'll just fully come down to the MPAA. And the fact that we're about 42 days or 41 days away from this movie coming out, um, I imagine we have to get the uh, rating for this movie very soon. I mean, they just released the rating for the Predator movie and they said it was rated R. And I'm like, I hope it's rated R. It's the Predator. Um, I know they made PG-13 Alien vs. Predator before, but uh, for that one, I was like, please make it rated R. Uh, but they also do talk about the tone of this movie and how it, it is a mixture of a lot of things. And I was thinking about that uh, with Predator, especially. Uh, that's one of my favorite movies. It's in my top 10 favorite movies of all time, actually. And what I like about Predator is that it is a, a different melding pot of you know various genres and it has comedy in it it has action in it it turns into a sci-fi movie and even a slasher flick and that's what i really like about you know the overall tone of predator is that it's all over the place kind of like real life is uh sometimes and so they talked about that being the case with venom and that it has a little bit of everything in there and a little bit it's just kind of tonally uh there's a consistent tone but there's other elements of other things because that's just how 
life is sometimes, but that's also how Venom has been written over the years uh, with that dark humor. So they talk about that they did their best. They try to push that R envelope, uh, but they'll, you know, the final decision will come down to the ratings board ultimately. Uh, but they said either way, Ruben Fleischer mentions if it's PG-13 or R, he's like, I promise it's as true to the characters we could make it with our limitations. And that's all his job was. And that's what he focused on. So it sounds like, you know, he sounds like he's very passionate about this and he understands the limitations. And they do mention Spider-Man in this and they mention that this was originally established to be its own world like from the get-go they said this was supposed to start the universe uh, that they are sharing you know like the venom verse as they call it in this article although we've heard sony refers to it as like the sony universe of marvel characters or something like that but uh for this they kept calling it the venom verse and i hope they just stick with that because uh, to me it should be called the venom verse and you just put venom in the place of spider-man in a way and if you want to bring in other spider-man villains you just have them fight venom i think craven versus venom would be a great fight actually because i don't want to just see venom fight other symbiotes in every movie it's already you know tough enough they're doing it in this one and then they're going to do carnage it already feels like a little bit of a repeat as far as villains go but luckily carnage has different motivations than riot does so hopefully it'll feel differently on that level but as far as like you know seeing him fight other symbiotes so I hope after Carnage, that's it, and we see him interact with these other characters like Morbius and Craven. if those movies go forward and if this movie is a success. Obviously, it all comes down to how well this movie is received, but they do mention that there's a lot of threads in here that kind of set up the broader universe, and we know that because obviously Mrs. Manfredi, who Ellen Gerstein, a very awesome person who was nice enough to do an intro for the show, uh, actually said that her IMDb page was right, that she plays Mrs. Manfredi, and that character has ties to Silvermane, which is another Spider-Man villain and also a character that might have ties to Silver Sable and you know depending on which version of the character you go with so there already is threads that we've seen to a bigger world here uh, but they also mentioned that that doesn't deviate from the story they're trying to tell and they do have a standalone story here and Ruben Fleischer even mentions I can't wait for people to see who Woody Harrelson's playing and what role he plays in this movie because he thinks that'll get fans excited too so I can't wait I know a lot of us are speculating carnage but maybe there's a surprise still yet maybe he's playing someone else who knows? But I can't wait for this movie, obviously. Uh, I'm getting a little bit more excited for it as we get closer and closer to it. Uh, but this article, unfortunately, doesn't give us a ton of new stuff. Uh, they do mention other things like character motivations. I think uh, Michelle Williams says that she kind of is... She wants her character born from the Me Too movement, uh, which I don't uh, fully understand what she means by that, but she says she tries to reflect it in the character's dialogue and wardrobe. And I was like, oh, that's interesting, because in one you know instance we see her like in a pantsuit and then another instance we see her like dressed as essentially a schoolgirl. and i'm kind of curious why that is i'm like why is a a trained professional you know lawyer uh dressed in this outfit i'm kind of curious what that how that ties into like her uh, you know interpretation of Anne weighing and how she wants to bring her into the modern world uh through through that kind of way so i, I don't know uh that that line and those those uh that part of the interview here the article kind of threw me through a little bit of a loop i was like uh what's going on what's Anne way's uh Anne weighing's thing going on uh because you know she has a very broken relationship with eddie brock uh, in the comics and i would say she sympathizes and cares for eddie until she becomes she venom and then after that she wants really nothing to do with eddie and she becomes kind of a broken person after that so it's it's really hard i mean it's it's really it's going to be interesting to see how they translate that character who didn't have a ton of page count in the comics so i know that gives them liberties and freedom to do new things with her uh, but ultimately that is her trajectory she doesn't become a stronger person in a way uh, with the contact of she venom because she mentions oh i'd love to do she venom at some point and it's like yeah but that changes her character in the comic and she doesn't become like you know super awesome you know badass well she kind of does and she kills a bunch of people but then she regrets it and it leads her to a very down the dark path of suicide um so it'll be really inter interesting to see how they explore that character throughout these movies and they did say that tom hardy did sign on for three movies so as long as this one's a success we're going to get at least two more Venom movies. So what do you guys want to see in future Venom movies? What do you think of the information I mentioned here? And is there anything I missed in this article that you read that you want me to talk about? We can do it in the comments below. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.